Hmm. In today's episode, we're sculpting this, which means we're carving this into this. We'll show you how we do it, work some mad detailing magic, recap our sculpture, and wrap it all up in the grand finale. Looking for top five entertainment for the next 50 minutes? Then park it right here and stick around. Hey, hey, good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, City Sculptor, and you have made your way back to Pangasus Bay. Hey, it's great to have you back here. And it is a cold, wet, rainy winter day here in Pangasus Bay. And that's just fine. That's just fine. We're not going to do a lot of beautiful work today. It's going to be a lot of maintenance work. And maybe the cold, wet, rainy weather is perfect for that. It'll help us focus. Yeah, we've got a lot of things we need to do today. As you recall in our last episode, we had spent a lot of time just trying to figure out what the financial equilibrium is going to look like in our city. And why would I continue down that journey in today's episode? We made a lot of progress last, last week, and we're going to continue that today. So there's four things that I want to tackle in today's episode. One, I want to use the 529 tile mod and then go in and lock all the tiles come in and remove the mod and then unlock only the tiles that we need. And so I'm going to do this. I'm going to jump out of cinematic mode here for you guys. And then I'm going to click on our map tiles map. And you can see we've got so many tiles that are unlocked that we just simply don't need to have unlocked. And we're paying maintenance on, on all of that. So what I want to do is come back in here and relock those tiles and then really open up the ones that we need and we're going to be using in order to continue along in our journey. And this was a great suggestion that was that was put forward by a number of viewers. And that's just fantastic. Thank you so much for doing that. And then let's click this back on just to make things a little bit friendlier. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to tackle downgrading some of those train stations. Now, if I jump back over here to the, um, the, the train station here, well, actually, let's get out of cinematic mode again. We're going to go to Bent Keel Junction train station. You can see that's $58,000 a month that we're, we're paying to maintain that station. I probably can get by with something like a small train station in here and only pay $7,500 a month. So we've got some options there. There's one here at Bent Keel. There's one across the, of the bay as well. Uh, it's Planners Park. And we'll kind of go through and check out our train stations to see if we can do some work there. The next thing I want to do was a suggestion by uh, Reed48, and that was to add tolls and charge people to park. Uh, specifically, he talked about downtown. We've got the downtown Pangasus Bay area, but I've got Harpoon Point, the West Edge. We've got North Amundsen and then also Crestwind Cape. I think if we come in here and put some parking tolls in, in these spaces here as well, it's going to probably encourage a little bit more in the way of um, using mass transit. So that's a great suggestion, Reed. We'll tackle that as well. And then the last thing I want to do is some, re, uh, some residential densification. And that's going to be important because we opened up a bunch of spots, a bunch of real estate, if you will, when we removed a lot of our services in our last episode. I'm speaking right specifically about this area here. I think we can bring in some additional residential in this space, kind of rework this and move that welfare office out of there. This used to be our news broadcast station, but uh, yeah, it was a little expensive. And then we've got more space here and here. I think we've got some space tucked in along there. There was some space, if I recall, way over here, just kind of adjacent to, to Crestwind Cape that we could kind of work out. And again, the process will be to densify these spaces out here. Maybe remove this little side park here. I don't need the side park and add some residential in there. Because again, if you look at our residential demand, it's off the chart. It's still very, very high. And I want to open up really quickly our economy tab to our taxation. Uh, we are sitting now at, at generating about $21.9 million in, in tax revenue. Uh, I can bring this residential up, I think, quite a bit just by just filling in some, some density there. And then right now our monthly balance is sitting at negative $9 million. We've come a long, long ways. We've got a long ways to go, but I like the progress we're making. All right, guys and gals, I just threw a ton at you. So with all that as a backdrop, let's do this. So the first thing we should probably do is create a save game that we can use to, to try out some things on. And I've already taken the liberty of doing so. I created a save game that I called uh, Pre-529. And here we'll just jump in and take a look at that real quick. Now you can see I've got a lot of save game versions for Pangasus Bay, don't I? I've got a lot of files there. But this one's called Pre-529 and I hit the save button and now we've got that we've got that Pre-529 installed there. So the next element will be to go in and install that mod. So let's jump into that next. Now, when we open up the Paradox Mods section here, one of the very first ones that pops up is that 529 Unlock All Tiles mod by Algernon. Thanks, Algernon, for your contribution to the community. Wonderful mod. And let's just go ahead and add that into our playset. 
and now it's part of it's it's activated in the playset. So what I'll be able to do now is jump into the game and go into options with the 529 tiles mod and then relock all the tiles. So let's do that next. So now that we've reloaded the game, because we had to jump out to desktop and bring the game back live, I've got the 529 tiles mod opened up here. And you have to first thing uh, you have to do is, is make sure that you've checked provide extra tiles at start or final milestone, etc. You have to make sure that this unlock all tiles is unchecked. And now I can go in here and relock all the tiles. So let's do that. We're going to set that up. And now we're going to reload our game, our little pre 529 save. All right, sit tight. All right, so we're gonna hit this load game button here and just see what happens. All right, here we are, we're back in the city and you can see we've got 529 tiles. Ooh, that's, let's turn that off. We have the 529 tiles available to purchase. So let's just go ahead and start buying tiles. All right, sit tight. Okay, there we did it. We unlocked all the tiles that we needed to unlock. Well, maybe with the exceptions here and there, we probably can come back in here and unlock a few more, but you're still seeing a lot of condemned buildings throughout the city. So that tells me that um, yeah, maybe the mod doesn't work perfectly, but I think what you'll see happen now is these condemned buildings will will fall down into a state of disrepair, they'll collapse, and then something else will spring back up in its place. I think if we wanted to accelerate that process, we could probably come through and uh, just demolish all those condemned buildings. But all in all, I think that's, uh, that puts us off to a good start. Now, the first thing I want to look at is, since we've done this, is, oh yeah, you can see them. They're starting to disappear here and there, the condemned building signs. Let's take a look at our our uh, city economy here and see what's happening. Look, at we're actually making money now. Ah, uh, this is a good thing. Let's take a look. Tile upkeep, $4.2 million. Now, I don't know if that's going to change or it's going to flux, it's going to move up or down or whatever, but the long and short of it is it's nowhere near the $18.5 million a month we were spending uh, previously. So even with our monthly balance now coming in at a positive 5 million, we have made tremendous, tremendous progress. Look at that, our tile upkeep, 4.2 million. Now, even if this grows, I think we're going to be, uh, we're going to be in good standing. So that's great news. Now our taxation here again is about $22 million. Our budget is a positive 5.3 million. We've already taken some huge steps. So thank you for those of you who suggested that. We'll now have to save our game uninstall that that mod and then jump back into the game so i'll be right back and we're back so you can see that we still have a number of condemned buildings all throughout the space here and i think that's just kind of one of the uh, collateral damage pieces if you will of using this mod and then uninstalling it and so forth and i and i think that's fine that's fine um you know again uh we're just trying to course correct after coming out of that economy 2.0 patch and make sure that we're able to have a you know, healthy, growing, sustaining, sustainable city going forward. So anyhow, um, let's do this. Let's oh, first of all, let's look at our population. Our population is a, in a bit of a free fall. I think we were sitting at about 102,000 people at our peak. Um, and, and that's come down quite a bit now at 98,000, 97, 9. And it'll probably continue to collapse as some of these abandoned buildings, um, you know, uh, people start moving out of them. You can see our residential demand is starting to crawl back up here. Our industrial demand is still fairly high. But again, the good news is that our finances seem to be doing pretty well right now with a positive monthly balance of about $5 million a month. So uh, as we move th forward through time, this tax base is going to start to grow again at 22.2. The budget is going to hopefully uh, continue to grow in a positive direction and we can still build up our, our cash reserves. Look at that hourly trend is plus $213,000. So we're headed in the right direction and we're done. Roll credits. Wait, no. Okay, so let's focus on the next part of our build. 
Now, at the top of the episode, we mentioned a couple of train stations that I want to replace. The first one, let's go way over here to Planners Park. You can see this train station, Planner Park Station. That has a maintenance fee of about $51,000 a month. We can do better than that. And, oh, also, you can see there are two train lines that, that service this station. One is Planners Park to Lansby Harbor, which is a future city here in Grand Vanillica. And then Gateway to Planners Park is just a train station that takes you to Gateway Village. Now, I don't know that I need to have this Planners Park to Lansby Harbor line. We can probably get rid of that. That's probably fine. So um, the first thing I want to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete that line. Let's just kind of get rid of that one. And then I want to take this station and knock this one down. Now I'm going to pause the game. We'll come in with our bulldozer, take that out. And then I want to grab a smaller train station because this is an end stop. Let's just get a small train station. See if we can fit that in there. Does it fit? Okay. So the idea is I'm going to have to probably bring that out to something like this. So we'll have to create like a little train loop in there. And that's just fine. Ooh, I like the look of this. Yeah, I, I get there's a road required. That's fine. That's fine. We can we can figure out how to put a road in, right? And uh, let's just come in with a basic, just a basic road here. And then we'll make it one way. And we'll come in from this other road as well. Bring that in. Let's turn off these snap to guidelines. Do the same thing on this end. Uh, we'll just flip the direction there. And voila, we now have a small train station where we used to have a huge one so we can tidy up this track too during the detailing time lapse but um yeah i think that's going to be a much better situation and now let's get that oh we do look at that the train line just snapped right into place what are these upgrades ticket machines allow passengers to buy their tickets before boarding the train increases the comfort level of the station well let's do that it's three thousand dollars a month i think we can afford that one yeah nice very nice now let's hit run again here and let's take a look yeah, a lot of people got disrupted there with all of that change. Some of these are levitating across the sky here. That's a miracle, really. It's a miracle. And <laughs> we can see they're going to start making their way now to our smaller train station. And uh, that's going to be much more appropriate. So that's going to help with some of our expenses in this part of town. Let's jump on to the next train station. Okay, we came across town to the Ben Keel Point station. And this is a pretty good sized station in here, too. It doesn't have to be. Uh, you can see we've got two rail lines that are running into it. One is to our downtown station, which is important. And then we've got another one that's running out to Hickory Heights, and that's another popular destination as well. We're paying a total of $58,800 a month in this station. A lot of upgrades, a lot of amenities here. You can see a train pulling out of the station, one pulling into the station. And uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and take that station out. Hang on, people. We're going to pause the game. This is going to be pretty disruptive. We're going to hit this delete bulldoze yes i do want to bulldoze that and then i want to come back in with let's maybe do a should we do a medium train station uh, actually we probably could get away with small well, let's do medium let's do medium yeah because there's one passover a crossover there i should say uh, so that's actually kind of cool so uh, i think we can do this we can just tie that into this central line here if i drop this in yeah before i do that i want to just make sure that i've got um yeah, we can create access here, just like we did in our previous station. Let's get a uh, one-way road. Uh, maybe I'll jump in here, come up about so far. Uh, I think we can go up one more, actually. That. Bring this down to... Hmm. I don't want to interfere with the bus line. Uh, let's, just, let's just bring it to here. Oh, you know what we could do? Diagonal into that. Yeah, I bet that would work. Okay, cool. And then let's put that train station in there. Yeah, I bet if we drop that in like that, that will be helpful. No pedestrian access. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. And then let's check out the lines. The passenger rail line. Let's drag you to here. And then drag you to here. There we go. Ah, okay. So this is good Good to know. I can take this road and I can slide it up one more spot. So sit tight for a second while I do that.
There we go. Let's just see here. <laughs> see if that train will sneak back onto that track over there. <laughs> Stand clear, people. We got a runaway train. All right, so there we go. That's starting to take shape, and uh, our train line has been restored. So we've got a couple of train lines that run in here. Ooh, look at these upgrades. Let's see. Oh, that's a lot of money, 16 grand a month. And ticket machines. We can do the ticket machines. Sure, let's do that. What is this one? A uh, small shop and cafe. Oh, that's nice. Uh, well, let's just keep an eye on our budget so far. And then, uh, you know, if we need to make the change later, we can do that. And then let's make a uh, let's make a little exception here and come in with our little pedestrian road that cuts across. There we go. Now we can have pedestrian access. We're running back down to our uh, light rail station that we have just across the little plama, uh, plaza there across the promenade. So there, very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Now we've got... Um, we were bringing some of those expenses back into alignment here. Transportation, yeah, there you go, 1.8 million. There we go. So just chipping away at ever so slightly. Oh, I love the train. Look at this neat little station. This is the first chance I'm getting to take a look at these. Oh, I love this little station here. This is really cool. Okay, awesome. Okay, so the next piece we want to tackle is... Uh, we want to put in some parking tolls for all of our downtown districts. I'm going to start with Harpoon Point here. And I want to go, let's expand this, go add parking, roadside parking fee. Yes, please. I guess we'll make it, uh, let's make it prohibitive. Let's make it $20. And then let's just kind of come through and do the same thing here in downtown Pangasus Bay. We'll do the same. And then I want to do that in the West Edge. North Amundsen. And then over here in Crestwind Cape as well. And the idea is we want to discourage on on side or on road parking, uh, roadside parking, I guess you'd call it, and maybe encourage them to use lots and or take public transportation. So that was again that was a tip that was brought to us from Reed 48. Thanks, Reed, and we'll see if that has a, an impact, if you will, on some of our on some of our revenue. That'd be that'd be kind of nice. Okay, on to the next bit. So the next step that I want to do is I want to do that residential densification that we talked about. And this is um, this is kind of our layout for Pangasus Bay. Now, you can see here as I bring this up, you're looking at a sketch plan that I developed, oh gosh, 10 months ago now. I mean, this was before the game even launched. And you can see kind of the downtown area, how it's nestled in here along the shore. And uh, you know, one of the things that's been pointed out to me as uh, we've moved forward through time is that it doesn't feel like the downtown has got enough weight to it, enough heft, if you will. It's it's maybe not big enough. And that's fine. I, I tend to agree with that a little bit, although I never wanted it to be a massive downtown and a big you know wall of glass and steel. I think that we can do some things to to add some additional density to the downtown area. And I'm going to start by doing that in adjacent areas where we've got some build space. Specifically, I want to turn my eye towards Crestwind Cape here. Now, if you look at Crestwind Cape, you've got some of these high rises up on this hill, and I think this is a pretty cool look and nice look into downtown. I think we can add a couple, you know, maybe upgrade a couple of these into taller buildings, if you will. And then I've got this whole notch down in here. In fact, it's this whole area here that goes from this meadow street to the uh, to the left and that's got our tram depot our road maintenance depot it's got a post office it's got an elementary school and so forth and it's got these little row homes that are down along this meadow street which is all fine and good it's got some medium size some mixed use and so forth that are down in here but i think we can add some additional density because that would add as a nice crawl up into our downtown and i don't think we've done a great job of doing that from crestwind cape this is a golden opportunity for kind of for us to take a mulligan and do that. So the first thing I want to do is I want to come in and I want to actually set aside, you know, this area as its own area. And Crestwind Cape, uh, let's let's take this node here and bring that back to say there. And now we can create a new district. We'll just run this right along the freeway here. There we go. And we've got the space, and now we can name this. Let's go, let's call this Alto, A-A-L-T-O, Ridge, Alto Ridge. And the reason I'm naming it Alto Ridge is it's named after the fam famous Finnish architect, uh, a gentleman by the name of Alvar Alto, and he was really in the Nordic classicism period, if you will. Yeah, clean, simple, straightforward, kind of a modern look and feel, mid-century modern, uh, maybe as a, a, a precursor to mid-century modern. And, uh, you know, just kind of a really nice, clean, elegant look. We've got a lot that we need to do in this space. And I thought this would be a, a great little way to, to 
clean and densify this uh, space up here as we step up into downtown Alto Ridge. There you go. Now, the next thing we're gonna need to do is get disruptive in this space. We're gonna have to start tearing a bunch of this out because really this whole thing's gotta go. And, uh, you know, we're gonna repurpose some things, move some things around as well, but um, we're gonna start with the demo process, starting with this little meadow street right down along here. We'll clear all this out and then kind of restart over. Okay, sit tight. Okay, so now that we've done that untidy business there, let's start moving things around. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna take this elevation here and push this out. I'll push this out to as far as I can go for right now. And then I wanna take a little alley road here. And maybe just come out, turn off that. Uh, just come into this space, maybe right about here and just drive this line out. And then I want to grab this road maintenance depot and drop this right down into this spot right about there. Yeah, that should work well. And then let's grab a two lane road, come right off of here, bring this straight out. And then hopefully we can just connect that straight across, right? All right, let's take that over into there. Nice. And now let's come in with our bulldozer and take out this... Uh, extra building here, this extra building. See if we can't fit that post office down in that spot there. And it does, it looks like it just fits in there. Look at that. Uh, let's center it up. Yeah, like that. Okay, that's pretty cool. And then now we can build one of these extra post van garages right across the street. Yeah, see? I kind of like this new ability where I can drop things in, I don't know, maybe not immediately attached to uh, to the building. So that's kind of cool. And then I'll just take this road and run it out to there so it's evened up, cut this piece off, and we're in business. So now I've got a road maintenance and post annex down in there. And that's gonna allow us to take our tram depot and slide that all the way up over in here next to the elementary school, which I think is just fine. Um, you know, it's gonna sit up there above the freeway still. And uh, we, we can put in some sort of a, a barrier between these two, but I think that's gonna be just fine. And now I can trim these off. One, two, three. And look at all those people scattering. Look at them go. Oh, running in the rain. Very good, very good. Now I'm gonna come in and cut that one off as well. And then I'll just come out with a straight road from here, run that out. Yeah, okay, so now our tram depot should come back into operation, and it does and we're we're in good shape so we, we're setting ourselves up and let's start the next piece which is just a little bit of terraforming up on this ridge we've got the opportunity now to really extend this thing out and try and mirror that uh what do you call this this is like a little access or on-ramp if you will freeway on-ramp mirror that up pretty well and get in here nice and tight like so and then i'll diagonal across back over to here flatten out this ridge a little bit we can put in a nice retaining wall there. And then I think what we'll be able to do is come in here and um, put in a nice little tram station here so that I can get the tram, uh, I guess, chaos, if you will, right off of the main street and put in a nice little tram stop right in here. A little light rail station there. And, uh, ooh, is this the same height as this? It is, look at that, okay, cool. We'll just run that right through there. Yeah, so we'll have a little tram stop in there and we'll put in our uh, residential up in here. So we're gonna have to go about building the road network up in this space here. Uh, but before I do that, look, there's a couple little things that catch my eye here. Let's take this elementary school and move it so that it is down here instead. Yeah, okay. And then we'll bring a road across the bottom down here. Uh, turn off these snap to guidelines. Just run this out to about, mm, let's go here. Yeah, that should be good. Frame that up. And uh, let's see here, now now oh, let's take this little thing out of the way. And then I'm gonna move this tram station over. Can I slide this over so it kind of lines up with the school? Across the street from the school? 
I can. Yeah, all right, that, that's nice. And then let's drop in a road right along here. That's gonna come right up along the edge of this. And then I can take an alley road and just follow this right along here, there, and bring you up to there and there. Yeah, then we can kind of extend this little commercial district that we've got. Just kind of wrap that right down along the corner in there. Maybe put in some nice different plantings in there. I think that'll be nice. And then let's cut these off. One, two, and bring this road up so that it wraps up sort of around this, um, this tram depot. And then let's make sure we've got our area all terraformed off nice and neatly. Yeah, you can see it's already, it's not exactly the way we want it, but we can fix that. And now we can stem off of this road with, uh, let's see here. Let's just see what this looks like. Yeah, come out to about there. Uh-huh. And then put in our continuous curve. And then wrap that out around here like so. Continue to do that. Yeah, that's probably good. And then we'll come back down in this direction here. Yeah, turn that back on now. 180 degrees, something like that. Sure, that's not so bad. And then, you know, what would be nice is if we're able to take this road straight across, I'm gonna turn off this snap to zone grid and just run this right on out through here. Cut that off. Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna come in from that, that point though and just go straight out of that point. And then let's come down here with, um, maybe just straight down here. And then from there, we're gonna wanna go straight across into here. Just drive that through, cut that off, cut this off and push this out into this direction like so. That way we can probably sneak in some parking kind of tucked in here in the inner side. And then I'll have some, um, yeah, I'll, I'm gonna just trim this off. I'll have some um, some taller tie rises, high rises up in this space here. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's starting to take shape. And uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, we should next focus on this little tram station down here. Let's go with a tram road. Mm -hmm. Little, uh, oops, tram. One-way tram road. I'm gonna turn off the snap to guidelines and I wanna just run this straight down here. Yeah, maybe about 47 meters. And then I'm gonna put on parallel road. Uh, let's go from here. Uh, let's uh, hmm, hmm. let's do this. Let's run this further down. Turn off the parallel. And then turn off the snap to the zone grids. There we go. And now we can turn parallel back on and it just runs straight across. Let's see here, snap to that. Okay, yeah, that's good. Straight across like so. And cut off this little end piece here. Make sure that we're going the right direction. Tram, there we go. This one, and have them both going the same direction. And then we can have the single one on the top just connect right straight back into this road here. And then have this other one, use our little complex curve, and go out to, up to, out to. There we go. Nice and neat back in. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. That works. Oh, we need to upgrade this other road up top here too and include a one-way tram road. There we go. Now we've got a spot for the tram to stop anyways. And uh, let's bring in some of those tram signs. Oh, in fact, we've got two that are sitting right down here. I'm gonna pause the game. I think I got one right here. Yeah, this one. Let's move that up to here uh, here okay and then this other one and it's down here somewhere let's see if we can click on it there it is let's move that one right up to here yeah that should work i would think right so they both have to come up here and then around and loop in I don't know. Let's see. Let's hit. Let's hit run and see if the game can do that. Yeah, everybody's starting to flee out of there. That's good. A uh, bunch of people standing around. I think they're all homeless. All right. So another thing I need to do is I need to trim off this little piece right here. Let's get rid of these little houses in there. I think that's a good idea. 
Uh, then I'm going to come out with a regular road, uh, just uh, right out of the center of uh, this guy here. Let's just go straight out of this. Yeah, before I do, make sure it's nice and smooth. Yeah, good thing we caught that. We'll come out of here, just run this road straight up like so, and that's going to give us the opportunity to put some additional houses right up along this little spot here, so we can tidy that up as well. All right, cool. That's starting to take shape. Oh, what do we have here? We've got a tram road disconnected. Oh, that's because there's a uh, there's no tram road there anymore. There we go. All right. Very good. Very good. All right. So now let's start building up our residential buildings right in here. Now we're going to drop in some parking in here too. Let's um, let's see. Let's grab a couple of mediums, maybe medium there, medium there. Yeah. And then let's see, uh, grab a small road turn off this and will this fit in here let's go yeah just like that Ooh, yeah okay so then this leaves a little space in there that's fine that's fine and then coming back across this direction i want to leave the same amount of space so let's do this i'm going to turn this off i'm going to run this right straight through here yeah like that and then i want to cut that one off just come back in connect this perfect yep Splendid. And then I think we can just come straight out here. Just do that. Yeah. Nice little block there. And then let's see here. Um, oh, we got a lot of mayhem going on here. Let's uh, upgrade this road to a, uh, yeah, two and one. That should help a little bit. Uh, and then let's see, um, parking. Uh, so we've got those two parking lots over there. Let's drop in some parking down here. Um, before I do, let's flatten some things out. And then parking, let's drop in a couple canopy covered parking lots. One, let's put them, can we put them side by side? Yeah, should we put them side by side though? Uh, maybe let's move this one out here and then have this guy move out here. And then maybe we can put some decoration in between the two. Nice. Now uh, let's go with a pedestrian road here. Whoops, uh, let's go pedestrian street. Can I come straight out of, da da da? right down the middle of these two maybe i just come out well maybe not or maybe let's do that 32 meters and then come out here 32 meters and then we'll put on our little curve let's hit a point here run that in 37 32 36 close enough 40 okay close enough Nice little decorative loop there. That's fine. Yeah, we can tidy those tracks up too. I don't I don't love the way that those are flowing, but yeah, okay, cool. All right, so now let's drop in some residential. Uh, let's go with a nice mix up on this ridge here. Now I wanna start with uh, some European high density housing. Let's go EU high density housing. And we've got some really big blocks right here. Let's see, can you do a five by five? Oh, yes, you can. And let's do another one here, five by five. Yeah, yeah, and those will be two nice big centerpieces there. Now let's do a North American high density, maybe in this corner right here, maybe a big six by six. Boom, this is gonna be super tall. Okay, now we can step in here and, um, you know, I don't think there's a problem with doing anything down along here, kind of more along the lines of well, actually, this would be the perfect space for mixed use right through here. Huh? We can just drop in a pedestrian street that runs right down the middle of these two. Uh, let's grab mixed use EU style, or should we do North American style? Let's go with, uh, let's go North American mixed use. And then we're going to drop those into one, two, three, four, five by fives. Yeah, let's just run that right along there. And that didn't work the way I wanted it to do work. But let's uh, let's just erase and start over again. Okay, so we're gonna go five by five. Can we do that? Uh, let's let's keep it off of the end. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, five by five, five by five, and then a third one drops right in there. Five by five. Ooh, do the same thing across the street. Yeah, this will look kind of cool. It'll be a nice little shopping, you know. And, uh, and, and housing promenade right down in this section here. Very nice. All right, let's see here. What do we want to put into this big block right here? 
How about some European style medium density in here? Let's go, let's see here, EU medium density. Let's go, like a big one. I don't know how big they can go. Oh, they can go six by six. Let's do the same thing in this corner then. Ooh, yeah, okay. And then maybe we'll drop in another one here. Let's just kind of try and keep it fairly uniform. Yeah. Uh, and then we can tuck in some North American style uh, medium density. Look at that. I like the way that that fills in. And then let's just have that wrap down around this corner here. Yeah. And then maybe we put in a commercial shop like right down in here like this. Ooh, will it will not work? Low density business. Okay. Well, maybe it does. It's just that we don't have any demand for commercial yet. That's okay. And then I'm going to come back to a North American medium density and I'm going to drop that right in there like so. Cool. All right. Now we should probably put some low rent housing in here, maybe right down along in here. Um, mm, let's have it come off of this. Oops. Let's do this. Let's have it come off of here, but let's go. Yeah, let's go five by five. Yeah, that'll work. And then can we go four by five? Yeah, we can. Look at that. Uh, this will be a five by five. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. And these are all going to be very tall towers. Wow, very tall towers. Yeah, but that's kind of the look we were going for. Let's do a little three by three low income there and a three by three low income there. We'll let those fill in. And then if I come back in here and take these out, let's see what I've got left for zoning squares now. Okay, down along this edge. Sure, we can do three by three there and three by three there. So that kind of becomes like its own little little complex out in here. Ah, cool. All right. Now let's come in with some uh, EU medium density right up here along this ridge line. So let's go four by fours or eh, actually four deep. We'll let it fill in the way it wants to fill in. And we'll do the same thing on this side here. Yeah. And then I, I kind of like the idea of mixing it up down along here. So this was European high density here. So let's do a North American high density, but a three by three. And then we'll come in with an EU high density uh, right next to it, maybe a three by four. Can you do that? Sure can. And then North American again, maybe four by four. Yeah. Oh, these are gonna be really tall. And then EU style, let's go four by four. And then North American three by three. And then we're gonna come in with some medium density. So EU medium density in there, three by three, North American, uh, maybe a two by two and a two by two. Yeah, that'll fill up on that ridge really nicely. This should be a park in here, I think. Uh, and then this area I'm gonna leave for right now, just so that we can have like this big iconic piece here has its own kind of its own yards and whatnot. All right, let's continue back along this little road ridge here and go North American style. Ooh, uh, I think we're gonna wanna go, mm, let's go two by four and two by four. Yeah, and those will be big, but not huge. And then let's finish it all off with some EU style in here, maybe a three by four. And then I'm gonna go EU medium density right up along here. I think these can go three by four, three by four, and three by four. Yeah, okay. Ooh, now this Alto Ridge is gonna be very populated. Look at this, we already have f almost 5,000 residents and we're just starting, we're just populating. So this is really picking up. Oh, and I forgot this little spot down in here. Let's drop in some U U uh, European style medium density in there. I like that idea. Uh, if I take this, pavement path and run right across here. Secure up our zoning squares. Yeah, then we can drop those in there. Uh, let's go right along here. Uh, let's go four by, uh, can we do four by fives? Yeah, let's do a series of those so that it looks like it's one big development. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, wow, that's that's starting to take shape. Oh, okay, so I think this is gonna be really cool because again, we needed that that step up in height coming from Crestwind Cape, working our way into downtown. And I think this is gonna really uh, blossom in here and, and, and kind of accomplish that task really nicely. 
Okay, let's let the game run for a little bit. Look at, we've created a traffic jam. <laughs> And I just want to show this too. Looks like every taxi in the city got dispatched to help fill up <laughs> our new neighborhood here up in uh, up in Alto Ridge. There are a million taxi cabs just scrambling all over the place here. Uh, obviously bringing in new residents. I'm not sure where they're all coming from. Maybe out of town. Let's just click on one here. Yeah, Origin Lansby Harbor, destination 22 Beach Street. So looks like everybody's cabbing in from out of town uh, to enter into our new neighborhood alto ridge look at all look at all the cabs that are just jammed in here uh we're gonna let that settle out and uh, you know just kind of make its way through about it's causing traffic mayhem here but once everybody gets moved in i think it'll it won't be a problem anymore you can see this interchange has already started to clear up this feels like a really good time for us to jump into a beautification time lapse uh, we've got a lot of work to do certainly up here in alto ridge I want to put in a park here and maybe fill this out here just as, a, as an exclusive space. Uh, let's soften up all these ridges here and so forth. Let's do some decoration here. Maybe just update this uh, this loop here so that's maybe a little bit more efficient somehow. I'm not sure exactly what to do just yet, but you can see this little pedestrian road is getting a lot of good use. Maybe I'll draw another, draw another one across here. Uh, and just tidy some things up here. We've got that commercial district uh, that's starting to fill in nicely up here. Um, but all in all, yeah, feels like a good place for us to, uh, do some beautification. So anyhow, why don't you guys sit back, relax, enjoy the time lapse, and we'll catch you here afterwards where we can recap our sculpture. All right, welcome back. 
and I give you the all new and improved financially solvent Pangasus Bay. <laughs> along with the Alto Ridge. Yeah, that was the subject of today's build. And, and we did a few things today. We started off by using that 529 tiles mod and we locked all the tiles, came back in, unlocked all the tiles that we wanted and made a huge difference to our budget. Now, as you recall, we had about an $18 million tile upkeep at the beginning of the, of the episode. Now we're sitting at about 4.2 million. And our tax revenue has gone all the way from being, I think, around $18 million up to about $24 million. So we're sitting on an overall a budget surplus of about six and a half million dollars per month in the city so we're back in the green we can start reigniting some of the old services that we shut down and uh, continue our journey forward now at the beginning of the episode uh we had started off with a population of about ninety-seven thousand, and i came through and i and i got this little tiny corner if you will of Crestwind Cape, and I knocked that all down and drove our population down to about 91,000. Well, I can tell you that now that we've got Alto Ridge in play here and it's continuing to fill out, our city population is over one, uh, 110,000 people. So just this little pocket alone has dropped about another eight or 9,000 people into the city. So I really like the way that this is shaping up. Okay, we started off by moving this little road maintenance depot in our post office down here along this major road and gave it good freeway access. So I think that's gonna go a long ways just to improving their efficiency. We dropped in some low income housing down here behind it because uh, that, you know, that might be a little slightly less desirable real estate here, but not too bad at all. In fact, when I checked in on the uh, residents of these buildings, they still show as wealthy. So even the uh, down and out have it pretty good here in Pangasus Bay. Now, if you look at the little European style, you know, medium density homes here, I think it offers a beautiful vista as you as you're looking across the uh, you know across the freeway up into that neighborhood I think it's just a nice little showcase piece out front there now making our way down along the freeway you've got a mix of good European and North American you know high density buildings in here and we cap it all off of course with this big tower that sits right in the middle here I did a lot in terms of just decorating in and around the buildings. A couple things I want to show you. I'll jump down in here. Just even these three little medium, uh, medium size, medium size uh, European uh, buildings in here. I just framed them up a little bit with some plantings, some flowers, uh, a couple little pathways that make their way through here. But I want to call special attention to this area down in the center that really supports this massive tower here. If I can, I'll dive down in here. I extended that concrete or that that paving that goes all the way out around that building to give, give it a little bit larger presence and footprint here. And then of course I built this little park down in here with just some curving paths in here. And then I dropped in some concrete in the center here and in this space here. And then of course lots of just random plants and flowers in there and palm trees along the edge. I put in a tennis court here and it looks like some of our homeless has managed to find that there. Okay, well, well, we'll do something about that. And then, uh, you know, just some additional plantings along the way, but make some nice little paths that made their way through here and just made this a warm, inviting block. Because even though you had this massive, massive building made out of concrete and, and glass, it doesn't have to be totally cold. And, and I think we've done a lot to warm that up in there. All right, so making our way back around to you, as you recall, we have some parking here with a nice little North American style mixed use uh, alley that makes its way through here. Just a nice little walking way to get through here. Some shops and some residences up in here. And then of course, we've got our tram depot. We tucked that back along the freeway here. I think that worked out great. And then we have our little elementary school. And then we'll make our way to our top five design element. Yeah, it's our tram station. And we built this little tram station in here. I think, uh, you know, as we as we jumped to the time lapse, I wasn't quite satisfied with the way it laid out and I made a big improvement. Uh, I managed to improve the traffic flow quite a bit by bringing all of the trams in down along this road here and then having the eastbound line tuck in here and the westbound line tuck in over here. And so I, I also put in some nice little uh, stops, if you will. I've got this little flower planting out in front of it, but then framing up the, uh, I think it's the westbound line or east, eastbound line here. I've got this little, uh, you know, piece of the surface here, the little concrete surface, and some some palm trees and some bushes, and then of course these two little round plantings here with sand and palm in the middle, and then a couple of little planters back here on the westbound side as well. So, you know, just kind of really, you know, spruced it up a lot. I dropped in this little wall here with some flowers and plants in front of it, and some trees and shrubs behind it, and then also this nice little retaining wall here, just kind of echoing or mirroring this curve, if you will in the pedestrian walk. Couple little shops there for convenience as you're getting off the tram and heading back to the neighborhood. 
So just love the way that this creates a warm and inviting space that brings you into the Alto Ridge area. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. I hope you guys and gals love this one as much as I enjoyed making it. I'm so excited and re-energized to be jumping back into Pangasas Bay after all of the financial hardships that we had, you know, coming out of the Economy 2.0 patch. And I hope you guys are going to enjoy it as well. We've got a lot of great content coming up. I think I had mentioned at some point we're going to do 40 episodes or so. It's probably going to stretch closer to 50 when it's all said and done. Now that that we had to side, you know, take a couple of side tours uh, to to get things back up and running. But I'm really excited about it. Now, just as a reminder, we are a growing channel thanks to your support. You guys have been so, so supportive over the first uh, nine, 10 months of our existence. And I can't believe we've exceeded now the 12,000 subscriber mark. I feel so blessed. So thank you so much. Um, You know, if you saw something today, make sure to leave a comment below or else just an emoji or a, a like just for the sake of the algorithm so that it can get our content out to a wider audience. And if you're also looking to throw some additional support behind the channel, we can also offer you a couple of options now. We've got our Patreon page, of course, we'll leave the link below. And of course, we've got memberships here on YouTube as well. All right, so thank you so much for those of you who've already signed up. Your generosity is much appreciated. Now, also while you're at it, make sure to chip away at that like button and hammer that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the happenings here in Pangasus Bay and our Grand Vanillica series as well. All right, well, with all that, I'm going to bid you guys a fond farewell. And until next time, good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.